Hello and welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Taylor Inman. We're going over this week's biggest headlines and what's coming up for the Flathead Valley. We don't have a guest this week for our deep dive segment, so I'm hitting you with even more top stories from this past week. Big Fork residents will have to find a new way to navigate downtown for the foreseeable future after the Montana Department of Transportation closed the Bridge Street Bridge due to structural concerns on Wednesday. The bridge, which crosses the Swan River and connects downtown Big Fork to Montana 35, was closed to foot traffic and vehicle traffic beginning January 31st. During its most recent regular inspection of the bridge, the State Department of Transportation determined that the bridge can no longer reliably carry traffic and was compelled to close it due to public safety concerns. Missoula District Administrator Bob Vosen said plans to replace the current bridge continue, but due to the structure's condition, they opted for an early closure. He said he understands the inconvenience, but safety is the top priority. He encouraged anyone with questions or concerns to reach out to MDT. In coordination with Flathead County, barriers will be placed at each end of the bridge and advanced warning signs will also be installed to notify drivers of the closure. The closure will only affect the areas immediately next to the bridge and the bridge itself. The entrances of area homes and businesses will be unaffected. Pedestrians and vehicles will be required to use Grand Drive to access downtown Big Fork. Sliders Park and other destinations southwest of the bridge can be accessed using Bridge Street from Montana 209 or Montana 35 turnoffs. The Montana Department of Transportation is preparing to replace the existing Bridge Street Bridge with a new structure that will allow heavier loads, including emergency vehicles, and honors the past iconic bridge with a matching steel truss shape and single travel lane. The new bridge will also feature an American with Disabilities Act's compliant pedestrian walkway. Construction is anticipated to start in 2026. In response to the closure, state officials are investigating ways to expedite the schedule, but timelines are subject to change due to factors such as funding availability, availability of contractors, utility and right-of-way coordination, and other unforeseen issues. Those with questions or concerns can email Sloan Stinson at sloan at bigskypublicrelations.com or call the project hotline at 406 406- 207-4484, which operates Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. An endangered insect could impact future water use at Glacier National Park's Logan Pass Visitor Center. The Visitor Center has flushed toilets, sink, and water bottle refilling stations for the visitors to the park's storied pass, but all that flushing and water bottle filling adds up to about 8,000 gallons of water a day, according to park biologist Chris Downs. The water comes from Logan Creek, which flows just above the pass and is home to the meltwater Ledney and Stonefly, a rare insect that lives in only the coldest, cleanest water sources in the park, typically below glaciers and perennial snowfields. It was placed on the endangered species list in 2019. With global warming, however, by 2030, most glaciers supplying cold water to meltwater Ledney and western glaciers Stonefly are projected to melt. As a result, habitat with a high probability of occupancy for the meltwater Ledney and Stonefly is modeled to decrease by 81%, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Logan Creek, particularly in the upper stretches, is an excellent meltwater Ledney and Stonefly habitat, according to Downs. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, at the time of listing, the Stonefly was confirmed in 113 streams, of which 109 were in Glacier National Park but they live only in the uppermost and coldest sections of the streams where water doesn't typically get above 50 degrees. The park takes water out of the stream through an infiltration box, which is held on a tank and supplies the visitor center. While water isn't taken every day, as the climate warms, things aren't getting better for the insects. The Park Service hasn't come up with a formal plan to address the situation at this point, but Down says there are some ideas being considered. One would be to install more pit toilets at the visitor center, The park already installed some a few years ago, but would have to install even more to fully accommodate visitors. If a vehicle stops at Logan Pass, invariably someone has to go to the bathroom. Though building more pit toilets would mean a larger developed footprint at the pass. A quick fix would be to add more portable toilets. While they still have to be pumped out, they're temporary and don't create a larger footprint in the parking lot. The park used them in 2016 when there was a drought at that time. Another alternative might be to drill a water well at the pass that would serve the visitor center without impacting Logan Creek. They're also looking at potentially upgrading the water collection system at the creek to reduce impacts, but that comes with risks. Under the Endangered Species Act, they wouldn't be able to squish the bugs while doing any work, and they also can't dewater the stream itself. Down says nothing has been determined yet. The park is working on a comprehensive water supply plan for the center, though no timeline has has been determined at this point. 
Officials with Flathead Electric Cooperative say the Flathead Valley, which is heavily reliant on hydropower, will face an energy crisis if an agreement to remove four dams on the Lower Snake River moves forward. The Biden administration is considering a plan that could lead to the removal of four Snake River dams, which Flathead Electric officials contend would increase rates for members. Negotiations for the plan took place between the four Columbia River Treaty tribes and Oregon and Washington. Flathead Electric Co-op General Manager Mark Johnson said Montana and Idaho were omitted from discussions despite their location at the headwaters of the Columbia River Basin. The basin itself is 258,000 square miles with the Hungry Horse Reservoir at its head. The Snake River is the main tributary of the Columbia River and the four U.S. Army Corps of Engineer dams that the Biden administration is looking to remove are capable of generating around 3,500 megawatts of electricity per year, according to the Northwest Power Conservation Council. On average, the four lower Snake River dams produce just over 1,000 average megawatts each year, according to the Bonneville Power Administration. Johnson said if the dams were removed, that electricity would have to be replaced. Wind and solar energy can be used to offset the loss, but would not offer the constant supply Flathead residents get with hydropower. Flathead Electric Cooperative, which has seen an 11% increase in customers since 2018, is the second largest electricity provider in Montana. Around 96% of power generated by the Bonneville Power Administration is carbon-free, owing to the hydro dams, according to, according to Johnson. The Columbia River system, specifically the Snake River, has been at the center of a protracted years-long legal battle in federal court over salmon fisheries. Litigation was paused in recent years while the federal government engaged in mediation with a coalition of environmental and tribal groups. The proposal to remove the dams addresses tribal treaty rights to a viable salmon fishery within the Columbia River Basin. The dams, according to environmental and tribal groups, decimated the Snake River's population of salmon and steelhead. Removing the dams would benefit those populations, supporters argue. If the leaked decision to remove the dams is approved by the courts, it will still need congressional approval. Johnson said in its place, new sources of electricity generation would need to be created. And we're ending today's pod with our most recent law roundup. A man with a short fuse reportedly walked into the lobby of an office. When he was instructed to follow the flow of traffic, he started yelling belligerently. When asked to leave, he went ballistic, flipping tables and throwing papers on the floor on his way out. He drove away in a white 2016 Toyota Corolla. A 12-year-old girl allegedly returned home with a bloodied face after an 11-year-old boy, wearing a black sweater with angel wings on it, threw ice chunks at her and refused to stop. He then reportedly flipped off the girl's mother. A woman allegedly called officers after hearing she was reported as a missing person and said she was in Missoula doing fine. Missoula police met with her and removed her as a missing person. A suspicious woman wearing multicolored Crocs, gray sweats, and a black jacket was allegedly walking around a building where she didn't live, looking in the ground floor windows and checking the doors. Four kids were reportedly smoking vapes and cigarettes. Officers counseled three individuals and contacted school resource officers. A woman accompanied by a child who looked to be about eight years old was reportedly approaching people and asking for money in a parking lot, and someone was concerned about the boy's welfare. Officers were unable to locate the pair. A woman in the middle of an intersection in Whitefish was reportedly flagging people down and trying to get into vehicles. Someone calling the Flathead County Sheriff's Office from Summers allegedly saw 10 dogs with matted fur caged in a small, partially covered outdoor enclosure filled with feces and urine. They did not see any food or water for the canines. Three vehicles allegedly slid into each other on a super slick Lake Blaine Road. No one was injured. A neighbor reportedly kept setting a dog loose in Kalispell by detaching it from a zipline runner. Someone calling from Whitefish reported a large rock in the street that was creating a road hazard and couldn't be moved by hand. Let's see what events are coming up this week. Remember, you can find art classes, live music, and anything community-related by checking out our events calendar at dailyinterlake.com events. The Firebrand is hosting a Whitefish Winter Carnival party tomorrow, February 3rd, starting at 2 p.m. There will be live music, grilled burgers and brats, and an appearance from the Royal Court. Glacier Nordic Club's Winslow Nichols Community Ski-a-thon takes place at Me- Lake Meadow Lake Golf Course on February 4th. It's a fun community fundraiser for the Winslow Nichols Nordic Race and Travel Scholarship. And the Queen's Cartoonist will be performing at the Wachholz College Center on February 7th. The group plays music from over 100 years of animation, playing in sync with the films projected on stage. The show starts at 7 p.m. 
Thanks for joining us. News Now is a podcast from the Daily Interlake. We're proud to be the largest independent newsroom in Montana and the oldest paper in the Valley. Consider becoming a subscriber to support our work. Call Circulation at 406-755-7018 or go to the Subscribe tab in the top right corner of our website. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel to never miss an episode of The Pod. Everybody stay safe and have a great week.